everybody welcome back to my channel today we're going to make a diy dollar tree farmhouse burlap place mats that are entirely customizable i'm going to show you four different ways you're going to need these burlap sheets from the dollar tree a scissor this fabric glue from the dollar tree or any fabric glue you're going to use a variety of ribbons or trims or whatever you want to trim it out with um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our iron on cotton linen depending on your iron um, and we're going to iron these flat um, we're not going to do any cutting. They are the perfect placemat size at, um, I believe they're 12 by 18. So they're just like the perfect size. And I found that ironing on the front and then flipping it over and ironing on the back was a huge help. Um, I've heard people say that these have a lot of shedding, but I haven't found that at all. And this is like my eighth or tenth, eighth or ninth piece of burlap sheet that I'm working with. Um, and some I actually shredded more on purpose because I like that little effect of the little fringe on the end. All right, so um, just do this, repeat this with all of them. And then um, what I'm gonna show you is four different options. Um, none of these are gonna go on the washing machine. They're all gonna be spot clean. If you have, um, if you really wanna keep these forever and ever and ever, and you wanna just use like some um, Scotch Guard to protect them, that's fine, you can go ahead and do that, but I figured it adds to that rustic country to just let them get like worn and stuff. So the first one I'm gonna show you is um, very simple. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take two of them, and this is one with no trim. So I was thinking like, could I just glue around the edge and maybe seal that last piece of um, jute weaving that doesn't want to make it you know shred and come apart but I actually liked the look of having a double layer of burlap so this particular placemat would be like two dollars because um, this is two of the pieces of burlap however we've talked about this before I like to do these DIYs using only Dollar Tree products but you can get some cheaper burlap at Walmart Maybe Joann's on sale. I don't know. I don't have a Joann's by me. Maybe Hobby Lobby on sale. I don't know. I don't have a Hobby Lobby by me. But you get what I'm saying. There's actually a roll of burlap. Uh, I believe it's 15 by 18. Um, that's a table runner. Or 10 by 18. Sorry. That's a, that's a table runner. It's 10 feet by 18 inches. Which is $6. And you can get a lot more placemats out of that for um, this amount of money. You can actually get 10 for $6. So um, keep that in mind. And that also has two finished edges, all right? So for this one, I'm gonna use some more of this black um, grow green ribbon that I used for the napkins. Um, and I'm just going to glue it um, right along the edge. Now, um, I've left a space of three rows, I believe two rows, I'm sorry, two rows of the stringies that may or may not come off as I use these placemats, but um, that's okay. Again, I, the look of having frayed looks great to me. The glue on the ribbon has been holding these, um, the, the rest of the frays in check, okay? Um, and I realized here when I washed the napkins that I didn't put enough glue. So if you go ahead and do that, um, you make sure you do that. So what I'm showing you there is I'm booking the ribbon. Um, if you've ever hung wallpaper, you know that you glue it and then you fold the glue on top of itself and you let it set up. But that's what I was trying to do with the ribbon. I, I, I basically put a, I didn't want the rib, the glue to be so thick. So I laid a line of glue down. I folded the ribbon in half on itself. Um, and then I used that uh, basically to spread the glue is really what I did it for. Uh, because this this ribbon was so thin and now this ribbon was the only ribbon that I'm using in this video that was not from the Dollar Tree Dollar Tree I've never seen have the thin grow grain but I mentioned previously in the napkin video I have like 8,000 feet of grow grain black ribbon because I have a French country home no I'm, it's not that much but it is a lot I have a lot and there was no way I was buying any more black ribbon my husband would have divorced me right there but I do use the ivory grow grain ribbon from the Dollar Tree in a second. So that's what we're going to do here, actually. This is from the Dollar Tree. This is ivory grow grain ribbon. And I want to let you guys know, if you're watching, that I got 
this one um, spool of ribbon had more than enough to do a placemat and a napkin. Um, and I still have lots left over. So I didn't actually measure out to see how many of these ribbons you would need. But it's nine feet and you can do simple math. Each one of these placemats is going to take a minimum of three feet to cover. Okay, no, that's not right. A minimum of five, five feet to cover, I'm sorry. So um, you'll need probably, uh, you know, at least one per, not at least one. You'll need probably one per placemat. So if you do four placemats, you might need three ribbons, whatever. So this one, I've, because the grill grain ribbon is thicker, I've put it right to the edge. Um, I've just left the fringe hanging over, and we're going to trim the fringe off in a second. Um, just because I like this look is a little neater. Oh, look, it's all bumpy and crazy, and how did that happen? <sighs> you know, from look from up here, it looks a lot different than when you're doing it. <laughs> but um, it'll come out neat, don't worry. I'll fix it. Um, what I noticed is the sometimes where the burlap was folded gives like a little warp to the grain of the burlap, the strings, you know, the weaving. Um, so I was trying to line up the ribbon with the weaving, thinking that the the it's probably better to do that because the fold will probably work itself out eventually. And it and it did after I ironed them after they were done. Um, you can see it's it's already better so and just like the napkin technique we are mitering these corners i don't know if you watch that video i'll link it in the description box down below well hopefully i remember to do that <laughs> um but basically overlapping ribbon and then cutting the top ribbon from the inside corner to the outside corner and that's how we create the miter you could also you know um pre-cut it but you know that takes a little bit more practice and skill so I just find it easier now I'm just trimming off all of the extra fuzz and you can leave this if you want like we mentioned in the the first one if you like that country fringy look on the edge you go ahead and leave it I just wanted this particular one to be neat and trimmed on the edge so you guys go for the look that you like and again, I show you the four different varieties. You know, you can leave it eclectic and have four different varieties. And you can also, you know, make them all the same. That's totally customizable. That's what we mean by it's customizable. It's totally up to you. Um, if you want just the plain burlap ones, if you um, like the ribbon, if you like to put bling on it, you know, you can glue diamond wrap on here. As long as you make sure that the glue gets through the layers of the burlap so that it glues the actual edge of the burlap to keep it from fraying. Um, but again, that's up to you. Um, you just want to use these, you know, make these just for the holiday and toss them out when you're done. That's totally up to you as well. Um, and let's see. Yeah. And the next one, after we clean up this mess, <laughs> Um, cleaning a very important part of doing crafting um, as you can see here real quick before we decorated I was just adjusting a piece of the burlap it was actually pulled in the middle but uh, inspect your burlap first check it out make sure that you have it the way you like it you know um, you can't really check them before you buy them unless you ask somebody at the store but you know you can always check them afterwards so this one we're going to do the leaves and I chose the red leaves like I did with the napkin and if you watch the napkin tutorial you saw that the leaves on the napkins were sort of a fail. Um, you know I would definitely probably sew them onto a nicer napkin first uh, instead. But on here it'll be totally perfectly fine. The glue is going to help. The glue is going to work like fray check. If you're a sewer you know what fray check is. It's basically this clear glue that keeps the um, fabric from coming apart. Um, and that's what the glue of the ribbon is going to um, do here. And that's what I was trying to have it do. Let's put it that way. Um, so you see here, I've basically put a dot of glue on the back of each leaf. Um, and then I've laid it out and then cut it to, to fit. Um, which is different technique than we did on the napkins. The napkins, we measured the size. There you go, like that one. We cut to fit and we just put a strip of glue. But this one I found that... Because the burlap is an open weave, that putting the dots of glue would probably be better. 
and like I said, I've had these for about um, five days and this is staying on really well. So um, again, I haven't washed the, na the burlap. I, I have to tell you, after the wedding in July, I washed some like high quality burlap and it was a like, even it frayed and it um, took forever for me to iron the wrinkles out. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to make these and I'm going to protect them and then I'm going to spot clean them and that's going to be it. <laughs> um, but of course you guys do, do you, you know, so what we're going to do is we're going to personalize these as well with words. I'm going to do some, just one type of font and I'm going to pick four different letters. Um, these were inspired by a picture I saw on Pinterest of a purchased, uh, item, but, um, you know, I have no money. So, um, so what I'm doing is I'm taking my lined paper and I've made a line at the top and the bottom of where I'm going to write my words. And then about one third of the way down. And the one third of the way down is going to be like the tops of the H's or the line of the T. Not the tops of the H's, but the tops of the hills of the H's. The lines of the T or the tops of the lowercase letters. Lowercase letters, the short letters. When I first saw the inspiration piece, it said eat, nourish, chow, and something else. So I started with eat and I'm just using my fat Sharpie here and I'm just, I'm free handing it, but I'm showing you how well you can trace whatever you have written on your page, just like we did on the napkins. Um, but I'm using sort of like a, a times new Roman kind of print font. So I made the H for nourish and my husband came over and talked to me and then I made the I for nourish and oh, I forgot the S. So what can I change the I into? How about a T? <laughs> so they changed and they ended up becoming eat, pray, love, and faith. So that's what this is. But you can see how well you can see through the weave of the fabric um, to, if you have a font printed off of line, you know, offline or printed, you can print whatever you want. You can just do a monogram of your family's name. You can write farmhouse, you can write country, you can leave it totally blank. It's totally up to you. Think about also if you'd like to embellish it. We glued, um, with this fabric glue, we glued leaves on an apron the other day. You could just glue something in the corner. I did have sort of a, a thing that I was going to do where I was like, oh, I should make a little pocket for like the silverware and stuff. But I just left it simple and I'm just, you know, cheap and easy. That's me. Um, so after I did faith, I decided to like, what goes with eat and faith? So, okay, faith and love, eat, pray, love. Okay, great. That's what we're going to do. So <laughs> that's where I came up with it. Um, what I, in hindsight, because the words that I was originally going to do didn't have any drop downs. <laughs> was I didn't leave enough room for like the bottoms of the Y or the bottom of the P, but it ended up working out. They were okay. They look, they look good still, in my opinion anyway. So keep that in mind when you're going to write, um, when you're going to print on yours, where um, you need to line it up. Another option was, I was thinking about, was actually to write them on the ends so that if you were sitting at the place setting, the word would go like um, top to dot, like top to bottom, up and down. So that's just another option, but I just love the way these came out and there you have them. So now that this is the end of the, the tabletop series, um, which I might make a runner. Hmm. Somebody mentioned a runner in a comment yesterday and I was like, Ooh, I might make a runner. Um, but now that this is the end of the tabletop series that I have already made, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I put this place settings together. These are White plates are from the Dollar Tree, the green ones too, and these ones with the leaves on them. The plates are from uh, Better Homes and Gardens from Walmart. And the bowls with the leaves on them are from the Collections ETC catalog I've told you guys about. So I just wanted to show you some options and hope you really like this tutorial and the series of tutorials. If you like the series, you know, let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you do like it. Share with friends and family. Anybody you know be interested in learning how to make any of these projects. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I answer everything. And as always, you take care. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye.